Ty Unruh, Generation Chosen. Um, I am grateful to be with you today. I want to share something that the Lord has been uh, further revealing to me over the last few months in terms of the harvest and the seed that is being sown into his harvest. Okay, the Lord has a concern for what's going on in the church because we have leaders that are partnering with the enemy to sow a seed, which is actually creating weeds, which are not recognizable from wheat. Okay. I'm going to read this scripture in Matthew 13, 24 through 30. And then we're going to read another one. And then we're going to elaborate on what I'm saying. But... We're, we're nearing the end of the age. The Lord is going to harvest his wheat and he's going to put it in his barn and the weeds he's going to harvest and he's going to burn with fire, unquenchable fire. It's the baptism. It's the, it's the fire baptism. Actually, if you want to, if we want to be correct of what is, is spoken of, by John the Baptist, when he says, there's one coming after me, he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. I know that the charismatic church likes to quote that for a baptism of fire. But that's not what it's talking about. That, that, that baptism is actually a baptism of burning up all the weeds, burning up all those fake believers, because that's what it is. See, the world is recognizable. When we're talking about God's harvest. We're talking about the church, okay? And mixed in with the church, going to church is weeds that are not born again, that are not saved, that are living a corruptible lifestyle, okay? That's what we're talking about. They look like believers. The weeds resemble the wheat. They look like believers, but they're not. They're mixed in with believers, but they're not because, and it's because mainly in large part due to the word that's being preached, due to a corrupted word that's being preached, a corrupt, how about this, a corrupted seed that has been planted into their hearts, a mixed seed, not a pure in a, not a pure and incorruptible seed that has been planted into their hearts, but a mixed seed See, the Bible says, Peter says, we're born again with a uh, incorruptible seed. <laughs> have all, uh, 1 Peter 1 23, I'll just read it. For you've been born again, not of a seed which is perishable, but imperishable and immortal. That is through the living and everlasting word of God. So there is a pure seed that is to be preached, a pure gospel. And when that pure gospel in its entirety, Jesus Christ is presented as he should be in his entirety. When that seed is preached, that living seed, Jesus, is implanted into the hearts and that produces a wheat. That produces wheat. It produces a pure uh, vessel that is to be harvested. A pure crop, I should say, that is to be harvested. But when a mixture is preached when a different gospel of salvation is preached, a partial Jesus is preached, then it's not that pure and incorruptible seed. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about. The enemy has infiltrated the church. He's infiltrated ministers, and he's twisted the gospel, mixed it, so that ministers are not preaching that pure seed. It's a mixed seed, and when that mixed seed enters the hearts of believers, it produces a weed instead of wheat. See, we have to understand that this, that this scripture that I'm going to read here in Matthew uh, 13, 24 through 30, it's not talking about the world in terms of those who are, you know, unsaved. You can recognize the unsaved. You can recognize the unsaved because they're not, they don't have a form of religion. They're easily recognizable. They're not claiming Christ. They're not 
You know, so they're not weeds that blend into the wheat. No, they don't blend in at all. They're just of the world, and you can recognize that. What we're really getting at here is the world infiltrating the church and looking like, pretending to be the church. They're worldly, but, they're, but they look like wheat, but they're actually weeds. They're tares among the wheat. So that's what we're talking about here. False believers. But it's just as much as the leadership in the church's fault because of the seed that is being sown, because of the partnership with the enemy preaching a corruptible gospel, a corruptible gospel instead of an incorruptible one. Peter said we're born again with an incorruptible seed, but it's the seed. We have to look at the seed that's being sown in the church because that's the source. That's the source of the weeds. And it's the ministers, some born again, some not born again, that are sowing the seed. So this is the concern of the Lord. So if I'll get to the scripture. It says, Jesus gave them another parable saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who has sowed good seed in his field. But while the men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed the weeds, resembling wheat among, among the wheat, and went away. And when the plants sprouted and formed the grain, the weeds appeared again. And the servants of the owner came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How does it, that the, how does it have weeds in it? And he replied to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Then do you want us to go and pull them out. And he said, no, because as you pull out the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. At the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather the weeds and tie them up in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, so then we'll look at the explanation, which is found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 36 through 43. The explanation is crucial. It says, and then, uh, he, then he left the crowds and went into the house, and the disciples came to him, saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man and the ministers of the Son of Man, the disciples of the Son of Man, sowing the pure and incorruptible seed that Christ is, the living, the living word, sowing the living word into the hearts of men. That's what he's saying. And the field is the world. <clears throat> and the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, those who are truly born again of the living word, Christ himself, Christ being planted in the hearts of men. And the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy has sown them is the devil. And the harvest is at the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. So just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. And the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of, of his kingdom all things that offend and all who practice evil. And the Amplified says, and leading others into sin and will throw them into the furnace of fire. And in that place there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. And the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So, this is very concerning because the gospel that Jesus preached had a requirement to it, to come follow him as a disciple. The gospel that's being preached now is here. You want to go to heaven? Pray this prayer with me. I'll just repeat this prayer after me. You see what I'm saying to you? Jesus never did that. Jesus didn't just say, okay, you know, just pray this prayer 
you know, let's try and get as many to pray this prayer. You understand that this seed that's being sown, which is not a proper representation of who Christ really is, this, this seed that's being sown that the enemy has planted in the minds and hearts of ministers who are then sowing this mixed seed into the field. And it's, it's producing weeds in the church that you can't tell the difference from the wheat because they look Christian outwardly. They, they show up on Sunday morning. They talk Christian. But they have no inward life of Christ in them. They're not following Christ as disciples. They're not wholeheartedly devoted to him. So we know, some, and some of those, the enemy has just snatched the seed as soon as it fell upon the soil. But they still come to church. Some of those that this mixed seed has been sown upon, this corruptible seed has been sown to their hearts, they'll fall away the first time of persecution. They're the ones that when persecution comes to America, that they'll sell out their brothers and sisters. They'll turn their brothers and sisters in. When persecution comes, they'll fall away immediately. Those are the weeds mixed in with the wheat. Some of the mixed corrupted seed has fallen upon soil where there's thorns and thistles, where you have believers who believe, but yet they have still allowed idolatry in their lives. They still, their idolatry may be their job, entertainment, worldly things, pleasures. See, the, the, the anxieties of this world, the cares of this world are going to choke out that seed. And it's not going to produce fruit. Because initially, a partial gospel, a mixed gospel, a mixed seed was sown into the ground and preached to their hearts, saying, just pray this prayer. If you want heaven, you have to believe in Jesus. You have to pray this prayer after me. Sign this card. Here's this card. Read it. You know, send a message online. If, if, if you get, I'm not saying that people can't be saved and go on to fullness that way. I did because a partial gospel was preached to me. And the Lord spoke to me four years after I was born again and called me to come be his disciple. And I chose to. I accepted the call. I said yes to it. But let me say this. If I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have done that, maybe by this point in my, in my, in my walk with him, I would have fallen away. That's the thing. Without the incorruptible seed that Christ is being preached and that seed being sown into the hearts of men, there's no guarantee. And Jesus tells us to preach that gospel, his gospel, his true gospel, who he really is, that incorruptible living word being sown into the hearts. Not a mixed, not a partial, not a perverted gospel, but the reality of who he is. And the requirements, his requirements, not just as Jesus the Savior, but as Jesus the King and Jesus the Lord. So we're going to take a look. And I, I, I'm sure I, I'm not going to define this in fullness, but I'm just bringing an awareness of it. And I'm going to give a partial revelation of this at minimum so we understand what I'm saying. So Jesus gives the command in Matthew 28, 18 through 20 to go make disciples of all nations. Disciples of all nations. Don't just, don't just get people born again. But that's what, see, that's what the difference between Jesus and the American church. The American church has said, we just need to get people born again. We need to have mass harvest. But if you look at the statistics I was looking at, the, uh, this is off the top of my head because I don't have this written down, but I was looking at the other day and I believe back in like 2006, 2007, somewhere in that time frame, 
79, 78% of Americans considered themselves Christian. And in 2021, that's dropped, I believe it dropped around 15% during that time frame. 15% drop in, in Americans who consider themselves Christians. So ask yourselves, is this mass movement to, to just pray this prayer, you know, I, you know, here, you know, but, but do you believe in Jesus? Okay, we'll just repeat after me, pray this prayer and confess this. So is this gospel of salvation to get numbers, is it working? Because I don't see it working. I don't see burning, shining lamps for Jesus. I see pockets of it. I see areas of it. I see different ministries. But I see America as a whole backsliding away from Jesus because of this perverted seed that has been sown from the pulpits of America. A corrupted gospel that's been preached that's causing people to actually fall away from Christ. That's causing there to be weeds mixed in with the wheat. That's causing the church to be lukewarm, quite frankly, instead of a burning lamp for the nations. So Jesus commands disciples to be made, not believers, not just the gospel of salvation to go out. Jesus commands disciples. And he told them that he told them, listen, when you go, teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. That's what he tells them. When you make disciples, teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Teach them this pure discipleship this burning for the living word. And he says, and even, even when John the Baptist preached, he said, repent. And he would say, produce, he would say, produce then fruit that is consistent with the repentance that you profess. You see, if you have the living word in you, then you're gonna live a lifestyle of repentance. You're, you're, you're gonna be producing the fruit of repentance Jesus said this in John 15, four through six, he said, remain in me and I in you, just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown out like a branch and withers and dies and they are get and they gather such branches and are thrown and throw them into the fire and are burned. So that's the same as the weeds that are mixed in with the wheat. They're burned. If you don't remain in him, if you don't produce that fruit that is evident of Christ living in you and Christ living through you, him taking further possession, him growing in you, him coming to maturity in you, him coming to fullness, the measure of the stature in you, There should be a progression as Christ, that incorruptible seed, increases to the measure of the stature of the fullness in his disciples. But if the seed was mixed when it was sown into the hearts of believers, if it was impure, and that believer never goes on to following the Lord as a disciple to where that seed is purified and grows to fullness, See, then we, that's, that's how the falling away occurs. I mean, you look at stories, you, you look at examples in the scripture like Zacchaeus, and Jesus, called, you know, Jesus had, uh, was, came over to his house, and Zacchaeus, uh, you know, he was like, listen, I'll give half of my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything, then I'll restore it. And Jesus says, today salvation has come to your house because he, was, because he is also a son of Abraham. That's Luke 19, 8 through 10. I mean, Zacchaeus, didn't, he didn't say, okay, here, he, Jesus didn't preach this, this word to him, like, you know, here, pray this prayer after me, believe in me. You know, no, there was a heart change in him. 
And he, and he, he just, he just, you could see the instant belief in wanting to follow Jesus as a disciple in his heart. And he says, and because of that, there was fruit, there was repentance. And he said, I'm going to do this. Be, because his heart, demon, those actions demonstrated what was in his heart. And, and because Jesus saw that, he said, salvation's come to this house. It wasn't a formula prayer prayed. Jesus separates believers from disciples, but the modern American church doesn't. The modern American church is just all, we're just all, you know, there, it, there shouldn't be a separation. There shouldn't be a separation. But Jesus is now separating believers from disciples because he has to in the American church because it's become so mixed with the weeds and the wheat. In Luke 14, 25 through 27, in verses 33, Jesus says, or it, the scripture says, now large crowds were gathered, were, now, now, excuse me, now large crowds were going along with Jesus and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, his own wife and children and brothers and sisters, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his cross and follow me, cannot be my disciple. And then verse 33, so then none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all of his possessions. So Jesus is saying, essentially, you're gonna have to live a life of self-denial, denying your own wants, your own desires, your, your own interests. You are going to have to take this route with me of following me as master, Lord and King, in complete obedience to me, to where I'm your first love and everything else is secondary. And you hate the self-life in you, you hate the self-life in everyone else, including your family, the self-life. Not that you hate them, but you hate the self-life in them. And you're gonna devote yourself wholeheartedly to me. Not just do you believe in me for salvation, but you are going to follow me. And that's what Jesus told him. He said, go out and make disciples. He didn't say go out and make believers. It's illustrated in the story of what we call the rich young ruler. Came up to Jesus, teacher, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says to him in, in uh, Mark 10, 21 through 22, uh, looking at him, Jesus felt love for him. And he said to him, you lack one thing, go and sell your property and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come follow me you know, becoming my disciple, believing and trusting in me and walking the same path of life as I walk, says the Amplified. But the man was saddened at Jesus' words and he left grieving because he owned much property, had many possessions, and he treasured more, that he treasured more than his relationship with God, says the Amplified, which is true. So there's a revealing of Christ in this, Christ the evangelist, Christ and the true pure gospel the true pure seed that Christ is preaching. He's saying, this is what essentially Jesus is saying. It's a package deal. You can have no other God but me. Come follow me and be my disciple. You wanna know what it has to have eternal life? Give up everything else. In this situation, the guy had a love for money. He had another God, a false God. Some people it's entertainment, some people it's their job, some people it's fill in the blank, whatever idol or idols they have that they need to give up. But see, in the American church, we haven't been preaching that. We've just been preaching, pray this prayer, be saved. Jesus says, no, we're not gonna do that. You see, this is, this is every evangelist dream. Come up to him, what, every pastor, what must I do to be saved? Okay, here, just pray this prayer, believe, Believe in Jesus, pray this prayer. That's not what Jesus does. Jesus says, you must devote yourself completely to me, wholeheartedly to me, not just believe in me, but you must demonstrate your works of repentance. Well, it's not about works. Yeah, sure. It isn't. We're saved by faith and grace. But if you're not going to give yourself to him completely, 
there's works that demonstrate your repentance. Like in this case, it's give up your money because the idol, the, the God that you're worshiping is your wealth. And it's going to hinder you from following me. So Jesus didn't just give him a mixed seed to where this guy would eventually fallen away because he had a mixture in him. No, Jesus was giving this guy an incorruptible seed to be planted in his heart. You want, you want to have eternal life, then you have to give up your idol because if you don't, it's going to cause you to stumble in the future and you're not going to go all the way. You're not going to have eternal life. So what's Jesus let him do? Jesus lets him walk away into damnation right there. He lets him walk away. The man doesn't have eternal life. We, the American church doesn't do that. We say, okay, listen, I know you're not there yet. Okay, how about, here, wait, 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 stop. Okay, you're not willing to just pray this prayer. Say you believe in Jesus, pray this prayer. And what we've just done is we've partnered with the enemy and we've sown a mixture into the heart. We've sown a corruptible seed into the heart of that man. And that's why we have tares mixed in with the wheat in the church. Because we've preached an Americanized gospel. We have not followed our master in preaching the true living word that Christ is. We have not required that people be made disciples at the time of salvation, like Jesus was saying. We have not required that. We've just required people to pray a prayer. We have not followed our master. We have not held to the purity of the gospel, and including myself in this. I haven't either. I have to repent as well. We don't get to pick and choose what kind of gospel we preach. We must preach the gospel that our master demonstrated and that our master preached. Not what makes us feel good, not what we think's best to get as many people saved. No, what Jesus did. Disciples not better than his teacher, but when well-trained and perfected, he becomes like his teacher and like his master. We follow him, Jesus, in example, in life. And Jesus says that you can have no other master but him. We must preach a gospel of not just salvation, but of lordship of Jesus Christ, of discipleship. No. Listen, he, we must present the gospel in fullness of this is Christ. If you want him, if you want to be saved, then you must make him your Lord. You must make him your master. It's not just about Savior. It's about you must conform to him, to his will, to his purpose, to his image. You must obey him. You must make him first love. You must give up all for him. You must deny yourself. You must carry your cross. And this is what the cross entails. And we explain the sufferings of the cross. And we explain it in fullness to people. And you must, by your works, demonstrate that you're no longer going to worship idols. You must listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying in terms of what you must give up and how you must demonstrate a true lifestyle of repentance like Jesus preached, like John the Baptist preached. Show fruit, the demonstration of repentance, that you really are born again, that you are really want to follow him as master. No, see, the full presentation of the gospel must be presented to people. So that that seed, so when the, so if and when that person says yes, that then that incorruptible seed will be planted in their hearts. So then then it will produce 30, 60, 100 fold. Then they will go on to follow Jesus as a disciple and not fall away with what's coming upon the face of the earth. Because many will fall away 
in the Great Tribulation as the Antichrist is revealed. As Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians, there will be a great falling away. And it's because of this mixed gospel and it's because of church leaders partnering with the enemy who is sowing this mixed corruptible seed into the hearts of, of the world. So I'm going to leave it with that. There's more to be said about this. But I felt I needed to release this. I've had these notes for the last at least month or two. But I heard a message recently where a minister touched on this, so I felt I needed to release this. I have more to speak on discipleship. I think I'm going to do a message next time with receiving the Lord's disciples, the importance of that, and how that releases the Lord Jesus Christ. But for now, I think we just need to conform ourselves to Jesus, his requirements and his gospel. It's not about us and what we think and how we think it should be done and about us getting numbers for the harvest. It's about the way that Christ wants it done. And if he's going to let someone walk away from him because they don't want to follow him wholeheartedly, they don't want to give themselves that as a disciple, they don't want to you know, give up an idol, or they don't want to give up sin, or whatever the case is. If Jesus, listen, Jesus will walk, let people walk away from him. That shows you that he, that he isn't concerned about numbers. He even said that, listen, the path is very narrow. Few there be that will find it to heaven, and many are on the broad path to eternal destruction, to hell. That's what Jesus said. That's what he prophesied. Those are his words. I think he knows what he's talking about. And he let this rich young ruler walk off into the wide path to hell because he wasn't willing to submit to the Lord's righteous requirement of his incorruptible seed being implanted in his heart. Even when Jesus preached in, in John chapter 6, he said, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood and he was speaking of a spiritual truth of communion with him and it says that it was a hard saying we're talking about to his disciples to the 70 it was a hard saying to them that they couldn't grasp this because they were so carnal minded that they couldn't grasp this spiritual truth this spiritual life that was coming forth from Jesus this understanding why? Because they hadn't committed to him fully like the 12. See, the 12 had committed to him fully as disciples. But, but the, the rest of his disciples, the 70, hadn't quite reached that place yet of full commitment. So Jesus preached this message and he doesn't bother to explain it. Why? Because he's separating. He's separating the weeds from the wheat. He's separating the believers from the disciples. Those who really want to go all the way with him. He makes the separation right there. And it says many of his own disciples walked away from him, walked with him no longer. Many of his own disciples, many of the 70, walked with him no longer. You would think that Jesus would have explained himself explain the spiritual truth that he was saying to prevent many of his own disciples from walking away. No, Jesus is making the separation. He made the separation then and he's going to make the separation now. And he's going to allow those who aren't completely devoted to him, whose hearts are not that good soil to receive the incorruptible seed, whose hearts are aren't willing to give up all else. He's going to let those walk away from him, just like he did in John chapter 6. That's a hard truth. But it's who he is. And the Lord is revealing himself as who he is to his mature sons and daughters, if we can receive it. Because the test is, are we going to still love him when we see him as he truly is? Or will our hearts start to faint 
and fade away as the disciples in John chapter 6 who walked away from him when they begin to see him for who he really is. They begin to get offended with him. Some believers get offended with when he reveals himself how he, how he is as the eternal Godhead, the I am, the king, the judge, he reveals himself like the, as, as that some people get offended because they only want to hear about God the Father and relate to him as a son or a daughter daddy, you know dad dad they only want to stay in that baby form of relating to him I'm not saying anything wrong with knowing him as the Father it's a wonderful beautiful truth transforming truth of God revealing himself in that capacity I'm just saying there are people, there are believers that do not want to go on with him. They don't want to go all the way with him as disciples. They don't want to know the fullness of the Godhead. And these are the ones who are at great risk from falling away. So this is what we need to, we need to partner with the Holy Spirit in revealing Christ in his fullness for who he is, that incorruptible seed that he is, the living word. We need to make sure that we are in alignment with what we're teaching and preaching and how we're revealing him, how he wants to be revealed. Jesus is our example, as always. We need to make sure that we are not partnering with the enemy and sowing a partial gospel or a false gospel or a mixed gospel or a corruptible seed into the hearts of men just so we can say we got people saved, just so we can add stats to the church or whatever the case is. But we need to make sure that that seed is pure and good and being sown into good soil, that it's going to produce fruit. And, it, and, and those believers are going to stand in the day of trial that's coming. We have an opportunity to repent. We have an opportunity to get it right we have an opportunity to walk with the Lord and make sure that others are walking with him fully as disciples. So let's use it. Let's use our time. Let's abide in him. Let's get close to him. Let's follow him. Let's cling to Christ because the days are short. The time is short. We need to prepare the bride. The bride needs to be made ready for him. So I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Let's encourage each other to follow the Lord and go after him. Strengthen each other to continue going deeper into him, having him become everything in us, expand in us to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Bless you guys in Jesus' name. Take care.